What's wrong? I, I accidentally hit hit pause for some reason. Um, anyway, it, it really bothers me when people do have like a dog house, but it's one of those little igloo things that the dog's going to fry in the winter or in the summer and freeze in in the winter. Tell me a little bit about how you handle those situations. Well, I have a, so my, I, I love my, my clients. They, they, they get it because I explain it to them and I help them understand that you know, maybe you should get up at five in the morning and take them out in the morning and run them and you'd need the exercise as well. And it's kind of better for your creativity in your life if you throw yourself off of your own routine once in a while. Awesome. So I encourage them to exercise the dogs when it's cool. It's a simple equation. I mean, enjoy the cool weather really early in the morning. You can come back in and you can start your day early or you can go back to bed if you want to because you've gotten everything out of the way already. So you can rearrange your schedule to fit your dog's needs, which is what we do for our children and what we should do for ourselves. And a lot of us just get lazy. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, it's just sometimes it's easier to all wait till later or, and it's too hot and the dog suffers. I'm also a big fan of cool packs if your dog is just out for a walk and is getting overheated, to put a cool pack on their belly and cool them down right away or on their neck or on their jugular vein, somewhere where you can cool down large blood supply quickly uh, without having to throw a bunch of uh, what I call uh, ice water down their throat because you're just going to hurt them if, you, if they drink too much cold water too quickly. Uh -huh. so there's a biochemistry there that is really important to understand. And a lot of people don't understand that or don't take the time or haven't gotten it presented in front of them in a way that they can actually absorb it and, and utilize it and do it. So it's really yeah. important to understand I that. that. I love that. And I, I think that so many people treasure today. We, we, we really treasure our animals and we want to do what's best for them. But like you say, the whole lazy thing is, well, I'll do it at eight o'clock. Well, sometimes in the summer, it's better at six o'clock. So I love the cool pack idea. I love, and I also know that in case people don't know, um, there are um, products that you can bring water on a walk with you so your dog has water. Correct. I mean, and also another thing that I encourage a lot of people to do is to make a small swimming pool in their backyard and swim their dog on a weekly basis, maybe one good swim, one good 30 minute swim, it can make all the difference in the world. It's actually pretty incredible. Wow. And depending on the size of your dog. Now, if you have a huge dog, I like to take them to a nice lake somewhere if there's one not too far from you and learn to them, teach them to swim, play a little fetch in the water because it's easier on their joints, especially when they're older or really young. It's an easier way to exercise your dog and get that energy out of them mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't harm them. Well, that's awesome. I mean, it's so important when, when we have someone who is an expert like yourself to help us understand these things and explain them because you're right. Um, I, I also say that a lot of people, they adopt a dog from a shelter because they're being a, a good citizen, but then they don't know how to act, interact with the dog. They do need to get that help. I always recommend get a dog trainer. I mean, it will benefit you and the dog so much because you don't know what that dog's been through and you really have to have patience and, um, you know, someone's painting in your house, I see. That's cool. I do. So my apology, we got hit by a tornado last year. Oh, and that's right. Finally fixed. They just replaced our, we, we didn't have as much damage as our, some of our neighbors did. We were lucky, but we still all had a substantial amount of damage. And so my, um, so my roof was replaced a couple of weeks ago, finally, and they have come in and fixed the nail pops and some of the areas in the ceiling where we had damage. So that's Tony, my painter. <laughs> Hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, you know what? On to Definitely is a good good segue into the whole idea of being an entrepreneur today, being a woman who is an entrepreneur, and we work at home. So my grandkids have been at the door asking questions. I probably uh -huh. like that one. Yes, Sam. <laughs> so funny. You may come in. You may come all the way in if you have a question. So I do have an office as well. We uh, since we purchased Miawana uh, this past few months. Oh, let's talk about Miawana. Let's talk about that next. Sam, what can I help you with, darling? I want a sweet. A sweet? No sweets. Not till I'm done. Go away. <laughs> no, no sweets until Grandma's done. 
So, okay, you should just stand there and make faces. So uh, after my, uh, so it's it's a funny story, but long story short, the cats were really mis uh, or underrepresented, not only in the households where I trained, yeah. because there were so many people, but the cats were so under unrepresented or underrepresented, and not only that, many households have dogs and cats together. Yeah, and there were a lot of things that helped keep the cat busy over here, that the dog didn't really care about. Although dogs do care about catnip, so I'm not saying they don't, but spray <laughs> up on their condo to keep them up on the top of their cat condo. And the, then I give the dog something yummy down here. Then I've got some space between them and they're entertained and they get some of that hunting and playing energy out. And when right. they come together, they're in a different, not only biochemical space, but they're in a different state of mind at that time because some of their instinctual behaviors now been um, nurtured. So now I can bring them together and they have a different attitude towards one another. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to get into the cat space, but there's also another reason there's catnip has huge benefits and being a farm girl and growing up with lots of catnip around and lots of cats in my mom's life, in mine, there, there's a, uh, there's a big benefit for catnip, not just for dogs, I mean, not just for cats, not just for people. The Egyptians used to drink it in tea. They still do. If you go to any uh, no or market, you can buy catnip tea. It's called cat mint. And there's other names for it as well. However, it's, an, it's a calming agent. It's a digestive agent. It helps with stress and anxiety. Uh, it attaches to receptors in your body. We all have those receptors and dogs have them too, but they just have them differently than cats. So my next venture is, is extending this into the dog space with some beneficial things for dogs to help calm them because I know how stressed out the dogs and cats are that I train and even that I have when different things happen. Like when Tony's here, I have a dog that gets a little nutty. So yeah. I have calming agents and they work. Uh, and they work well. well. I, would, I would be so interested in that because, you know, back in the day, Olive, our little Boston Terrier, yes. who I have so many pictures of on Facebook, she would just really have such anxiety and tremble and, and drool during thunderstorms or, or fire, fireworks. And my Emily didn't do it until recently. And so Tom keeps saying she's channeling Olive. I don't know, maybe she is, but, but she also now has, she will, the minute she hears any, like a car backfire will set her off. So I'm looking for that. And I know a lot of other people are because we, their hearing starts going when they start losing their hearing or their vision or a combination of some of their senses becoming more less or less, uh, they become more dull or they dull a little less sensitive as they age. Then they become hypersensitive to the noises they hear, especially if they were raised with a protective state of mind. Say they were a rescue and they had to take care of themselves too long or, or they had to fend for themselves for too long, then they can be overly aggressive when it comes to protecting their new owner. When they start losing some of those senses, then they compensate by over becoming over nutty when they hear a thunderstorm or something because it's coming to attack their family and it sounds like bombs. Boom, yeah, boom. for sure. So very important to understand that. And, and sometimes the calming agents can help take that edge off and help them chill along with some other things. I have some techniques I use like my doggy savasanas and some other things that really help in combination, but you know, this, nothing proper ex exercise, mental and physical. Oh yes. And this kind of goes back to what we opened the, the conversation with the survivor mode because Emily's a survivor. She, she grew up her first two years in a, a research lab and they, they did drug studies on her. I don't know what the drug studies were. I just know that that's, that's where she came uh, from. And hearing, and we know that affects her vision later in life, because as we notice, our, a lot of elderly people that have eye problems and hearing problems have either done a lot of drugs, taken a lot of drugs, been, on, been around a lot of chemicals, or have, um, mm -hmm. uh, have uh, some genetic propensity, a lot of sun. So there's elements and there's a big rainbow of uh, possibilities and if any combination of those can cause hearing uh, loss and uh, and vision problems. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we, so it's, it's just, we look, I look at some of the animals that have lived in um, less than ideal conditions, we'll say, and you take them out and you put them in a, a good loving home and they, they blossom just like right. people do. I mean, we are survivors.
definitely. So that unshakable optimism is a must. It's something you dig for, find, and once you have it, you keep it. And dogs have it. Dogs have it. I mean, when you look at them, they just have that. They just know tomorrow's going to be a better day, regardless. They get up and their tail is a wagon, and you're like, I love you. <laughs> come and come and let me pet you. Because petting a dog, we all know, or a cat. Um, or just about any pet that you love really helps your blood pressure. So I want to get to your wonderful news because it really is wonderful news. And I want to talk about that. Well, so I, I have a, a decent social media presence. I don't have a lot of followers, but I have a lot of customers and clients uh, from the past that follow me with friends and relatives. And so uh, I have a really nice following and I've been, I've, and I travel a lot with work. So as I'm traveling, I do post when I go somewhere really neat or I experience a dog or a cat. Uh, I have a dog or cat experience that I want to share, but I was stalked on social media by the university of Missouri, Kansas city for, I think, I don't know, a year or less, but they were stalking me because they were looking for a recipient to a, a scholarship for a Kansas city resident who would attend their graduate uh, MBA program, their uh, Block uh, School of Management's Executive MBA. And they offered, they, I, I, I received this email stating that you've got a scholarship if you're interested, please come for a tour, et cetera. So I, this was just this last May and class starts Saturday. So I wasn't sure oh if I would to take leap. Um, but I was definitely honored and I thought it was such a great thing. And then I thought, you know what, this is a gift you've been given don't look a gift horse in the mouth, just go. So I'm starting uh, this Saturday. I'll be the class, one of the participants in the class of 20, graduating class of 2021 with my executive MBA. We're doing two residencies, one in Washington, DC, and one uh, in a, out, of, out of the country. I'm not sure what country that is. We, we, I believe we get a vote on that um, this first semester. Oh. So I do international... So now I designed toys for me. I want to. We're in yes. PetSmart, and we're in the twenty. We're, in, we're under twenty five hundred rooftops between independent pet stores and PetSmart, and we have international distribution beginning. And I design. I'm, I do a, quite a bit of the innovation for the company, so I've designed some toys that are really fun. And I and one of our, a couple of our toys are the biggest sellers in at PetSmart. So they're really fun, and we do a lot of international business with the manufacturing of some of those products. We do a lot of manufacturing ourselves in our warehouse, but there are a few things that we have to have made. And in the volume that if you want to cover 2,500 stores and make that many cats happy, you have to actually be able to do things in volume. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to work on solutions for that. Like how can we change the way that we do international business and, mm -hmm. and, it's an opportunity I don't want to pass up and I'm so honored to have. And it's a, a, it's so neat when someone calls you and says, Hey, I have this for you because I've been watching how hard you've worked and you deserve it. So kind yes. of well, and there, there's where the um, optimism comes in because I tell people all the time, put it out to the universe and then the universe is going to respond and it may not be exactly what you thought it was going to be, but you need to be open to possibilities and opportunities. And you know, the path doesn't go straight ahead. It's always got little side things and little circles. And this is exciting for you. And it's exciting for me to know that you're doing this because I know that you will then do great things. Not that you haven't already. You are already doing I, uh, uh, meow, Anna, meow Anna and the cat toys. And I mean, it's so funny, isn't it? We, we talked a little bit about it's so funny that these are cat toys and you're a dog trainer. But it just goes to show we are pet people. We from Blog Paws, so yes, Geraldine comes to me, me from Blog Paws. Um, but so is the rest of the world in some way, shape, or another. Pets are integral to our lives. I want now to end because, oh, we could just we could just go on and on, and we will. We will have another, Geraldine, another conversation where we talk more, especially about your MBA program and what you're doing and the kinds of things you will do with it because that's entrepreneurship to me. That is what I want um, the women to understand is being an entrepreneur isn't just one thing. No, it's a, uh, it's a, it's not just one thing. And it's, it's, um, it's a way that you, you get to know yourself so well and, and you get to know your style with others and you get to know what, 
how you can bring things together to exponentially make spread joy everywhere. It's a, yeah. it's a very empowering feeling, but it's just the part of the process that I love is, is the process. It's not getting there. It's actually all these steps that I've taken to get there and not looking at it like it's a race, looking at it like it's just this great journey. And all the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet, whether that's positive or negative, makes no difference to me because it's all been part of the journey mm -hmm. and every step has been empowering. So. Ab absolutely. Even the, even the little stumbles, right? I like to tell people that um, happiness is found along the way, not at the end of the road. Um, you know, and then I also tell people that if, if you, in the game of life, if you got the, to the end faster than everybody else, you didn't win. You didn't win nothing. So we should all pause. We should, um, you know, embrace our survivor mental uh, attitudes if, if it's their force. I mean, everyone has something they survived. There's so many ways that you can be a survivor. We should also be unshakable optimists. I love that. I think that is the best part of what we've talked about today. So, Geraldine, I want to thank you so much. I am going to put all the information in the blog post on how to connect with Geraldine, on all of the things that she's doing so you can um, have the benefit of getting to know her as I have. So, from Nurturing Big Ideas today, this is Yvonne DeVita. Thank you, Geraldine. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Have a great day.